On October 7, 2011, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, a very special event took place. Help us everyone to the very first National Whispering as Lady Spakebeard Mustache Competition. This was a beard and mustache competition dedicated solely to women wearing fake, usually home-crafted facial hair. And I admit that when I first heard about the event, I thought it was a little bit odd. I mean, women with fake beards have been the subject of farce since at least 2,000 years ago, when the Greek playwright Aristophanes wrote the comedy The Congress Women, in which the women of Athens decide that the men are unfit to govern, and so get themselves elected by wearing false beards and pretending to be men. Very well. Look, now we're all together. Let's check over what we're going to do. Uh, we each agreed to bring a beard to this meeting. Do you have yours? Of course. Mine's divine. And mine's very fashionable. Epicrates decrees that this year's beard lines below the knees. So as Miletus of Whisker Wars fame walked out to host the event in his giant bunny suit, I couldn't help but wonder, what was the point of a women's facial hair competition? Wasn't the entire concept just kind of silly? This here is an historic event. This is... So I asked Tessa, the organizer of the Whiskerinas, why she created the event. And I quickly realized that she loved facial hair competitions for the same simple reason that we men do, because they're lots of fun. The Whiskerinas was basically a vision I, I had once I went with my husband to the, my very first competition. I went and I did this really fun, of course, costume. I did a bearded Viking um, girl and I competed in my very first competition. This was my first kind of taste of what the bearding community is all about. And I had such an amazing um, feeling when I went to this competition, the love I felt from everyone, the acceptance, the excitement, the, it was so fun. There was no, um, you know, judging, and I just really feel like it was something I knew I had just kind of my eyes were open to, that it was such a really cool community of people. Although there had been a few women's categories at scattered beard and mustache competitions in the past, Tessa decided that it was time to give the women their own event at which they could really shine. My brain started churning, and I thought, man, I really want to do something with this. I don't feel like there is, you know, I felt like I was a part of it, but I feel like there's another whole world. You know, there's chapters across the U.S. of these facial hair clubs with, you know, parts of Beard Team USA, certain just facial hair clubs and groups that are associated um, that do a lot of work together with the men. And I've always seen just random pictures of girls and wives as part of it. So I thought, let's give them a voice. Let's give them something to feel a part of. And Tessa's overriding concern in establishing the Whiskerinas was to make it as inclusive and as fun as possible. So I started the Whiskerinas just as a... Um, kind of to extend the family and our vision, everything about it, I want it to be positive, I want it to be supportive, I want no drama, I want no negativity, it's just a lot of fun. Like Tessa herself, many of the women competing this evening first learned about the existence of women's fake facial hair competitions through a male friend or partner. I'm here tonight because there's tons of girls who support all these guys that compete in the beard in world and uh, just basically, we're here to support and then just have fun tonight as well. My friend Travis decided to compete in the National Beard Competition, and I decided to entertain myself on a Friday night along with all our friends and make some stashes. <laughs> I've been to a few competitions with my husband, and the girls are always having a lot of fun, and I decided this time I wanted to get in on the fun. And one of the competitors, Savannah, even dressed up as her then fiancé, now husband, Steve. When I asked her why, her answer was straightforward. He's my inspiration for just about everything. But even if the women competing this evening first heard about the world of competitive facial hair through the men in their lives, they quickly made it into something of their own. So a lot of the girls that have been a part of this for sure have been um, associated with a husband or a boyfriend that has a beard or a mustache. Um, and they really surely rally up or, uh, behind the whiskeriness. But you've got, to, you know, there are definitely quite a few women out there that um, surprisingly, when people think women are not into beards and mustaches, you will be surprised. There are quite a few women that love it, and they not only just love men with beards and mustaches, but they love to wear them themselves. It's um, like Halloween, so the girls have a lot of fun with creativity as far as what types of material they use, how they apply it, because you have to, you know, use it to use certain spirit gums and hope it doesn't fall off your face, whereas the guy already has his face on, his, you know, his hair on his face, so all he's doing is styling. So it takes a lot of skill to actually make facial hair and then also the creative side to it. It takes, um, it's, it's an art and a talent um, to do these really cool things. 
Tessa's own outfit for the evening was this inspired homage to international bearding superstar Willie Chevalier, and indeed, extreme creativity is the hallmark of a women's fake facial hair event. Um, I think the ladies bring it harder than the men. We have to compete harder because we can do anything we want. The men, you either have it or don't. We have to make it. Um, well, I started thinking about all the different artists I love and um, their beards, but then I wanted to do something completely different and do maybe a piece of artwork they've done. And I thought Van Gogh was an awesome choice for Starry Night because um, it kind of goes with the hair theme. And um, it's human hair sewn to like a base. Turn to the audience. She's missing an ear. This is how realistic it is. actually use some, um, some glaze from, from wood and dipped each one in individual and had to go on several nature walks to get get all my materials and then uh, dip them all in glaze and lay them out on the deck to dry and, and stick them all on a piece of cloth. So. And did you make this out of yarn? Yes, I did. About four different types of yarn. Four different types of yarn. I really didn't understand that there was more than one type of yarn, but you know. Well, this beard is made out of my own dreads that I had on my head for nine years. And I figured that the best way to go with the dread beard would be the pirate outfit, so I'm rocking the pirate look tonight. The inspiration of my um, outfit is pr pretty much the Adams Family, but more of a, a girl style to it. Um, what I'm wearing tonight, right now, this is actually purchased, hopefully that's not against the rules, um, but I have three other costume changes. I have a spaghetti and meatballs, which is totally made by Hobby Lobby. I created that. I also have a candy mustache, which is for the love of chocolate. Brought a lot of that candy in. And the fourth look is moss and flowers and butterflies, and that's also a Hobby Lobby treat. I don't think most people know this, but you actually, this is the hair from the back of your head. Is that what that looks like? Absolutely. Oh, so you took the hair from here. Can you just turn around? It's coming from the back. Cake in my world. I like a lot of stuff with nature and whatnot, and like initially I thought the Spanish moss, that's what this is, and I thought it, it's curly, it looks like hair. So then I just decided to add nature-ness to it, I guess, put some birds, flowers. I'm a girly girl. So what do you call the spirit? Genie! <laughs> The Whiskerinas event was not only a competition, but also a charity fundraiser to fight breast cancer. One of the categories of competition, the pink category, was specifically inspired by this fight. The coolest thing about what we did, of course, for the Whiskerinas and pretty much the passion for Whiskerinas, um, it, and that is to work with the community and work with charities to earn money, to do something fun wearing a beard and mustache and to be able to earn money by doing that while we have fun. I love the fact that we were able to do it for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. We pulled together and we were able to raise over $3,000 in one single night. And I'm really proud of that. My reason is because my grandmother died of cancer. So when I see anything cancer related, I support it. I picked this one for my mother. She's a breast cancer survivor. today for my mother-in-law who survived the other cancer affecting women cervical cancer and she's a survivor as well and at the end of the day while trophies were handed out in each category no one seemed very concerned about actual placings more important was that everyone enjoyed themselves the capacity crowd had only positive things to say the whiskerinas i think are a very awesome part of the beard community this is one of the greatest things that's ever happened to bearding the, the women are, they just steal the show every time. Well, there's been so much time and effort put into each of the looks that the women have prepared for us tonight. Everything from full uh, mustache and beard to maybe just a mustache, all made of different materials and crafts. It's really cool. They're very imaginative, very fantastic beards and mustaches. Um, they're pretty amazing. And I think it's awesome that they have their first like annual competition here. At least one judge who has officiated at men's competitions in the past also seemed impressed. 
I think I enjoy judging the women's one more, um, just because of uh, the the, ex the extra creativity involved in this one. But most importantly, the competitors themselves had a great time. I would love to compete again. This was a riot. It's just the best group of people who put this on, and everybody I got to hang out with, and everything is just fantastic. I mean, I've done it once. I'm doing it tonight. I will do it every time I have the opportunity. Well, we're at the Whiskerino's first event, and it was really a great time. I had a lot of fun. A lot of great creative uh, beards and, and mustaches. I'll be here next year for sure. The Whiskerina's Nationals marked something of a turning point. Although there certainly had been women's categories at men's facial hair competitions before, now it seems that every men's competition includes women's categories. There's even been a second event dedicated solely to women in Austin, Texas. And most men seem genuinely welcoming of female competitors at their events. Oh, I, I love the women's categories. Uh, in Charleston, that's always been the last two years in Charleston, it's been our second biggest category. Of course, a little bit of enlightened self-interest may also be involved. Uh, making them feel part of it uh, definitely helps us keep doing this because without the support of our females, uh, that we love so dear to our hearts. Uh, if they're not having fun, we're not going to be able to do this and have fun. Even so, there are some in the facial hair community who are a bit uncomfortable with the idea of women's competitions, at least when they are held as part of men's events. In a discussion on the Whiskerina's Facebook page, one gentleman was brave enough to admit that, while he appreciates the support and care that the ladies put into making their facial hair, facial hair competitions are for those who have grown hair. Others welcomed the idea of women at men's events, commenting, for example, that I believe a lot of times we take ourselves too seriously when the men in the facial hair world forget that our talent is to grow a mustache or beard. And this gets us back to the question I asked at the start of the video. Are women's fake facial hair competitions silly? As far as I'm concerned, the answer is, of course they are. But that doesn't actually matter, because so are men's competitions. In either case, we are talking about a contest dedicated to facial hair, which I think we can all agree is not the most serious of subjects. Now, the fact that even a men's facial hair competition may be a bit silly does not mean that it is not worthwhile, or that it does not have its serious side, too. A man's beard or mustache is with him always, and is a significant aspect of how he defines himself in his day-to-day -day life. He can justifiably feel proud when he grows and maintains some spectacular facial hair, especially in the face of frequent public disapproval. These factors all lend an added resonance to a man's competition that a women's competition simply can't have. But a women's facial hair competition has its own rewards. A competitor can feel justifiably proud when she assembles, through her skill and ingenuity, a spectacular creation. But more fundamentally, I think that most women participate in these events for the same reason as men do, to be part of a great community. And this is why I am always happy to see women's categories at men's competitions. The facial hair community is all about welcoming everyone. The competitive aspect is certainly worthwhile, but I think that all of us, men and women, participate in these events more because they're fun, and to be with our friends, and to be part of something that accepts us all and that can often be magical. This cuts across gender lines. Indeed, Tessa explained that, in the final analysis, this was her main goal for the Whiskerinas. One thing about the Whiskerinas that I really hope everyone can see is that we are showing people what bearding is all about. To me, that the community, as I mentioned, is nothing but positive, loving, super fun people. And if you're a, a comic book nerd or if you're a metal headbanger or if you are, you know, um, sit, sit at a desk job making tons of money or if you're, you know, deliver pizzas. I want everyone to be welcomed. I want them to feel accepted. And um, it's meant to be a lot of fun. And in the end, I think it is clear that everyone did have a lot of fun. But it seems only appropriate to let Tessa close the story of the Whiskerina's first national ladies fake beard and mustache competition in her own words. We just finished up and wrapped up our very first annual national ladies fake beard and mustache competition. I am so overwhelmed with the amount of participation that we had, the love, the support that, that filled the room. We sold out the venue. We've got girls coming out with the most creative artistic beards. We had moments of awesomeness when they recognized people that have been affected with breast cancer. I am so privileged and so honored that all the work we put into this has come to such a great moment and I can't wait to do this again. Well if your beard was mine to kiss, I just don't think I could resist. 
Beards tied on, who is to say we are not men?